Hi everyone, my name is Adam from Powerbelt 3D and I am so excited to finally get to share the first assembly guide for the Powerbelt 3D Zero with all of you. Uh, but there were a couple things that I wanted to get out of the way before we get started into the step-by-step -step instructions. Um, and the first and maybe the, the most important is that uh, we know fully that this is not the highest quality, highest detailed um, assembly guide that we would like to be publishing. Um, and it is on our to-do list to create a much more complete step-by-step -step guide um, in the future. However, we know that those of you who pre-ordered a Power Belt Zero uh, have been waiting a long time, so we wanted to get something out there so that you can get started and get printing. Also, because we can't go back in time and edit a YouTube video after it has been published, uh, please refer to the assembly guide on our website. There will be a link in the description for the most up-to-date instructions on how to put everything together. Everything is broken down into sub-assemblies, and so there will be links in the description to each chapter of the step-by-step -step assembly guide so that you can easily jump around to whatever you happen to be working on in your process. And lastly, if you are the proud owner of a Powerbelt 3D Zero, uh, please consider joining our exclusive users group on Facebook. Uh, there, all of us can connect and share the, all of the best tips and tricks on conveyor belt 3D printing. We really hope that you have fun building your Powerbelt 3D Zero and that it is able to empower your most ambitious projects. Uh, with that, we will get started into the instructions. Happy printing! The very first thing we are going to tackle is the X-axis rollers. This consists of two identical pieces of sheet metal that will go on either side of the x-axis, uh, along with a handful of bolts, nuts, spacers, etc. Um, this will be very similar to a lot of the other sub-assemblies within your printer. We'll place three 40mm M5 bolts through one piece of sheet metal, place 15 millimeter spacers on those, followed by V wheels, followed by five millimeter spacers, and followed by M5 lock nuts. Then we will do the identical process to the roller for the opposite side of the printer. Then we can use a hex key and an 8mm socket. Here I had 3D printed an adapter for my socket so I didn't have to use the entire wrench, and we can tighten up all of those nuts and bolts. Everyone makes mistakes. Next, we will take some more 40 millimeter M5 bolts and we will put two spacers on them, followed by a large washer, a small washer, and an idler bearing. We'll do this on all four of the inner posts. Followed by another lock nut on the outside.
and onto the next x-axis roller. And as soon as we're done stacking the pieces on the second roller, we can do the same thing, take our hex key and our socket and tighten those up. Next we'll take an 8mm M5 bolt, there will be two of them for both sides and we will place those through the holes and kind of loosely thread on some T-slot nuts. This will just kind of prep everything for when we put the whole X-axis together in a little bit. Next, we'll move on to the extruder assembly. In the video we shot, the hot end and extruder assembly were already put together, but that won't be the case with your kit. The hot end will need the M7 choke nut added and the nozzle changed out from the standard E3D style nozzle into a Mark 8 nozzle. This allows us to have the right clearance to be able to 3D print onto the conveyor belt while still using the majority of a standard hot end. The approximate distance between the heat block and the heat sink is about 10 millimeters. And once all put together, your extruder assembly should look something like this. Here we'll have a hot end, a cooling fan, and an extruder assembly, along with another piece of sheet metal that everything will mount to, and a whole bunch of hardware. The first thing we're going to do is attach the large hot end collar to the sheet metal extruder mount. We will do this with three small M3 screws and one larger 20 millimeter M3 screw. It uh, might seem a little bit weird uh, to be using these different sizes of screws, but we will use the 20 millimeter M3 screw to serve as our strain relief later on. You'll, you'll see what happens. And I tend to get a little impatient, so we'll grab the drill to continue driving this through the 3D printed hot end collar and the sheet metal mount. Next, we will add more M5 bolts. All of these are going to be 40 millimeters long, and we have four of them for the V slot wheels, which will be the first step. We'll add our 15 millimeter spacers, then the V slot wheels, then the smaller spacers. These are either three millimeters long or five millimeters long. I don't remember offhand, but uh, you'll you'll be able to tell which ones they're supposed to be. Followed by M5 lock nuts, just like with the axe axis rollers. We can then add some more 40 millimeter M5 bolts, and these are actually where later on the GT2 belts for the motion system will get wrapped around and zip tied in place. Uh, but we will make these um, a little bit safer to attach belts to uh, by making the surface nice and smooth by adding these 15 millimeter spacers, uh, two of them to each bolt, and then put an M5 lock nut on the end.
Now is the fun part where we can again grab our hex key and our socket and tighten everything up. Now we can attach our cooling fan mount. So this will attach to the back of the first piece of sheet metal. Uh, it has threads built into it, and so we can use some three millimeter screws to go through the first sheet metal piece into the cooling fan mount to secure it in place. Now we have our extruder assembly, our hot end, and our cooling fan. These will come in separate pieces in your kit, uh, but we had ours pre-assembled. So the first thing we will do is attach our extruder motor to the main sheet metal piece. And again, uh, impatience, so we'll speed up tightening that. Next, we will put the hot end in place. Let's first just make sure that our wiring is uh, kind of oriented correctly around this subassembly. Uh, this would probably be easier if everything wasn't already wrapped together. You can do that at a later time. Uh, so we will place that within the large hot end collar and use two M3 screws and the smaller hot end collar to mount it permanently. You also may notice the piece of Bowden tubing wrapped within the wires that gives the cable a lot more stability while the XY axis is moving around. So would highly recommend using your Bowden tube to add some stiffness to that cable. And going back into uh, everyone making mistakes, uh, there does need to be a small section of that Bowden tube um, in between the extruder assembly and the hot end itself. And so here we will reinstall the hot end with the Bowden tube where it is supposed to be. And we actually cut ours so that the Bowden tube goes all the way through the bottom half of the extruder assembly and goes all the way up to the space in between the drive gear and the idler bearing and this kind of direct drive setup um, allows us to do really cool things like 3d print with flexible filaments and gives you overall more reliable precise extrusion here's us just testing the fit where the bowden tube will be zip tied to that long screw later on now we can mount our cooling fan duct to our sheet metal cooling fan mount, again with two M3 screws. And our cooling fan will be attached with M2 screws. Uh, there will only be two of them that go into the top two holes of the cooling fan sheet metal mount that is threaded. 
Next, we will make the corner idler mounts, another very important part of the frame before we start tapping the larger things. Again, this should look familiar. We've got some spacers, we've got some M5 bolts, washers, and bearings. Again, we'll start by placing two M5 nuts uh, and one large spacer and one small spacer. The larger spacer should be 10 millimeters and the smaller spacer should be five millimeters. Uh, this kind of offset for the bearings is going to allow the belts to cross with minimal contact, which is very important for a core XY motion system like we're using. And then we will just kind of do the opposite and do a 10 millimeter and a five millimeter spacer, finish those off with lock nuts. Now we can grab our hex key and our socket and tighten that up. If you haven't caught on, this is a uh, recurring theme uh, in all of our sub-assemblies. And now we can do this a second time for the second corner of our printer. Next, we will put the entirety of the frame together, quite an undertaking. So the first step is taking our two X-axis rollers, our extruder assembly, and the shortest piece of the slot aluminum profile. First, we will slide on the whole extruder assembly, and then we will slide uh, an X-axis roller onto each side. We will loosen the T-slot nuts and then slide it into place. You can loosely tighten these for now, but uh, we don't want to tighten them fully because we will be adding this to the entirety of the frame in a little bit. And it can be a little bit tricky to make sure both of the T-slot nuts line up perfectly with the V-slot in the extrusion, uh, but it isn't too difficult uh, with practice. Next, we can assemble the bottom part of the frame. And so there are two pieces of 2020 V-slot extrusion and two pieces of 2040 V-slot extrusion. And these go together with our angle mounts like we can see here. And so there will be uh, 30 millimeter M5 bolts that go through the piece of sheet metal through the piece of uh, 2020 V-slot and into the threaded ends of the 2040 V-slot and we will have to do this for both sides. This combination of M5 bolts, uh, two millimeter thick sheet metal and actual machined profiles makes for a surprisingly rigid frame, uh, despite what you might see in pictures. We'll use our hex key just to make sure everything is nice and tight. Next, we have some 20 millimeter long 
M5 screws, and we can use this to reinforce the back of our angled brackets into the threaded section of the 2020 V-slot aluminum. and we'll reinforce that angle bracket on both sides of the printer. Next, we can add our second piece of 2040 aluminum. We have 30 millimeter M5 bolts for this process as well, and that will go simply through the 20 by 20 V slot into the threaded section of the 20 by 40. Same thing as the first piece, only there isn't a piece of sheet metal on the outside. and we will add our bolts to the other side as well. With the bottom section of the frame complete, we can start to add the angled arms that make up the X and Y axes. Uh, these will go and attach just to the sheet metal uh, and into the threaded section of the 2020 V slot with 20 millimeter M5 bolts. We can tighten that up. And then we will add our angled arm to the other side of the printer. Next, we can use our corner brackets and the top bar of the printer to get that all set, which will make applying it to the printer frame that much easier. So here we will use 20 millimeter M5 bolts that again will go straight through the sheet metal part and thread into the 2020 V slot aluminum.
and the top bar of the printer is complete. Now we can take our x-axis and slide it onto the angled arms of the printer. Because we didn't tighten those T-slot nuts all the way uh, onto the center 2020 V-slot rail, that means that we can kind of shift things around to make sure uh, it fits nicely. Next we can attach the top bar to the frame. Again we have some 20mm M5 bolts. We'll get that positioned into place as best we can and those bolts will go through the sheet metal right into the threaded section of the angled 2020 beam. And we'll put the bolts in and tighten them up on both sides. Next we can turn our attention to our motor mounts. Right now we will take our Z motor mount and just prep it with the 8mm M5 bolts and the T-slot nuts so that we can slide it into place on the frame and we'll do the exact same with the smaller X and Y motor mounts. We can also do this with two of our bearing mounts. These bearing mounts go at the back of the printer and allow us to easily adjust the tension of the conveyor belt. Meanwhile, the bearing mounts at the front of the printer actually bolt into place directly to the frame to make sure everything is aligned correctly. Here it'll be a little bit tricky, uh, but if we are careful, we can slide our X and Y motor mounts up the side of the angled arm mount. Um, in hindsight, it might actually just be easier to slide the T-slot nuts into the aluminum profile and then place the M5 bolts through the sheet metal mount and screw them into the T-slot nuts when they're kind of loose in place. And here we can place our rear conveyor roller mounts. Here I'm placing them in this orientation, but they should actually be facing the other way. So the angled side of those roller mounts should be facing the back of the printer. Um, it's too bad that I uh, installed them this way, but we know better now. Next, we can take our longer conveyor roller and get it all aligned and slide our second bearing mount into place. Mm -hmm. 
Again, those should be facing the other direction. And we can tighten them loosely in place just so that conveyor roller isn't moving around while we're assembling the rest of the printer. We can then turn our attention to the conveyor rollers at the front of the printer. And as I mentioned, those bolt directly into uh, threaded holes onto the frame itself with 20 millimeter M5 bolts. Here's our Z motor mount that we prepped earlier and we can simply slide this into place. We can tighten it up loosely, but we'll have to adjust this later to adjust the belt tension between the conveyor belt Z axis motor and the front conveyor roller itself. We'll put our roller into place and then use two more 20mm M5 bolts and our sheet metal bearing mount to put that in place. Next we can add our heated bed mounts and so if you haven't already you can add some t-slot nuts to the center of our 2040 millimeter v-slot beam and attach those with m5 bolts as well this is one area where your components should look different than what were, is pictured here uh, we were using 3d printed bed mounts and you should have sheet metal ones and we can do this for the front side of the printer also. And while we're at it, we can attach our LCD screen. Uh, this isn't super critical. Actually, this is likely in your controls subassembly, and you should probably just do this later, but this is how we filmed it. Plus, this is a super easy last step to do when you're already dealing with connecting everything to the control board. So just keep this in mind for later. Um, T-slot nuts and M5 bolts, just like everything else. Here we can attach our Z motor to the sheet metal mount. You'll notice that there is now a closed loop GT2 belt around the end of our conveyor belt roller. Uh, that should be there and we probably should have done that earlier. With the motor mounted, we can then take that GT2 belt, put it around the two pulleys, slightly loosen our Z motor, and then pull it towards the back of the printer. And when that closed loop belt is tight, we can tighten the two screws, holding the Z axis motor in place, and that will keep the closed loop belt tight during printing. Next, I would recommend taking your x-axis and rolling it up and down a couple times. Here I am using a shoestring to tie it halfway up the printer, which will prep everything 
perfectly for the next step. We can attach our X and Y axis motors to the printer itself. We had to slightly loosen the sheet metal mount and this is probably the most awkward step um, of building this printer. Kind of have to bounce back and forth between loosening and tightening the five millimeter bolts and adding the M3 screws to the motor itself. Sometimes we have to tip it up at this strange angle to really get access to it. But we will mount it with the M3 screws and tighten everything into place. We'll have to do this for motors on both sides of the printer. Next, we will set up the GT2 belts in the printer. That way we can actually move the X and Y axes around. The first thing we will do is wrap one of the belts around the lower right mounting post and we will zip tie that in place. This entire process can seem a little bit intimidating, but overall it's pretty straightforward. Next, we will route that through the idler pulley on the x-axis. You can see me struggling with it there. Um, truthfully, you should probably route it through the slot and the v-slot extrusion like you see me do now. That will then route around the GT2 pulley in the lower motor. And yes, it's a, a little fidgety, uh, but we'll get through it. Next, we will route that under the inside V-slot wheel on our X-axis and around the and around the outer pulley on that side, then around the inner pulley on the opposite side, and we will feed it through the idler pulley close to the x-axis. And again, with the pulleys closest to the x-axis, you will have to thread it kind of around the pulley and into the slot in the V-slot aluminum. From there, we can wrap it around the uh, opposite side mounting post and we can either lightly zip tie in place like we're doing here uh, but really the the better option which I think we'll show in a couple minutes is we can use a binder clip to temporarily secure it in place this will just help keep everything where it's supposed to be until we get both of the belts installed and then we can tighten them it's important during this process that the pulleys around the X and Y motors are loose. That will be very important when we go about tightening the belts so that the tension on the belts doesn't bring anything out of square within the XY frame. Here you can see both belts uh, with binder clips in place and with the pulleys loose on the X and Y axes um, you repeat that first belt routing process for the other side. Um, but after you do that, um, you can zip tie all the pulleys, all of the belts in place. Um, you do that by simply pulling the belt tight and then applying the zip tie. If you are extra cautious here, uh, you can trim down the belts, you can add multiple zip ties um, if you want. Um, we found that one is normally enough. Um, so you'll have four zip ties, two on the back at the post and two on the front uh, for each belt. Next we will install the conveyor belt and this is one area where you will definitely see some differences uh, from the kit that you have received. Uh, this was a one of our many prototype conveyor belts and it was just a little too short and so we are going to try to make up for that for the sake of installation 
with lots and lots of tape. Your conveyor belt will fit end to end completely uh, without having to add extra tape in between. And you'll see here that we are using a blue painter's tape on the bottom. Um, in your situation, we have now started using aluminum foil tape instead because it provides a much stronger bond. But regardless, you will want to put a couple pieces of tape, two to three, on the bottom side of the belt and then also have tape going over the top of the belt as well. Having some smaller pieces of tape wrapped from the bottom to the top of the belt helps it stay secure across hours and hours of printing, so that's something we would highly recommend. And that last green piece of tape is PET tape. Um, this will allow the prints to stick to the entirety of the conveyor belt. It's very similar to the special plastic that we use on our conveyor belts. And to tighten the conveyor belt, once you have fully tightened all of the bed springs of the heated bed, we will tighten the conveyor belt by uh, loosening those screws and then pulling back on the two rear um, bearing mounts for the conveyor belt roller. After that, you can see us using the drill and we will loosen the bed springs to bring the heated bed up to just touch the conveyor belt where it is sitting tight already from the, the tension that we applied by pulling back that rear conveyor belt roller. And just to make sure everything is as tight and secure as it can be, uh, we tend to uh, tap the conveyor belt a little bit to see if there is any potential wiggle room between the belt and the heated bed itself. This is something that does take some practice uh, and you might not get it right on your first try. But once you get everything set, it will be good to go for hours upon hours of endless 3D printing. Next, we have some miscellaneous steps that we have dubbed finishing touches. So, uh, strain relief is handled uh, for the X, Y axes. That's really the only place where uh, any wiring pulling is likely to occur. And so we have a 3D printed mount uh, on the bottom that will go right near your control board. Like we mentioned earlier, you should use your Bowden tube wrapped within the spiral wrap with all of the cables that go to your extruder and hot end assembly. And so we can use that small piece of Bowden tubing and zip tie it using two zip ties to the strain relief mount for the bottom part of this cable setup. The Bowden tube can be pretty slick as it's supposed to be, uh, so make sure to really tighten these zip ties. And here we'll just trim off the ends. Next we go to the top of our wiring assembly and you can see we have zip tied it in place to the long 20 millimeter M3 screw uh, to make sure that we have a firm connection on both sides just in case any wires get caught while the XY axis is moving around. Next looking at the wiring we are using an MKS base control board. You can already see the drivers um, installed. Just make sure to install all three jumper pins underneath those motor drivers and we can secure the board in place with some M3 screws. This is how the control board mounts to the frame itself. 
If you put some T-slot nuts in place before, great. Uh, if not, you can use some of the drop-in T-slot nuts that should be included in your extra parts bag. And we can use two 8mm M5 bolts to secure that in place. We like our control board to rest not only on the 20mm uh, v slot on the sides of the printer, but also to have it partially rest on the 2040 v slot, uh, the one further towards the back of the printer. Next, we can install our Y end stop. Uh, so, again, you can use either one of the slide in T slot nuts, or you can use one of the drop ins like you're using here. You can put that in place and then use another 8mm bolt to attach the Y axis and stop attached to its mount again with 3mm screws. Next we can attach our X axis. We will need some more 3mm screws. We will need two small M3 washers and the X axis actually threads directly into one of the X axis sliders that we assembled earlier. Now our power supply. We have our power outlet, we have a power supply cover, and the power supply outlet uh, just pops in place with a friction fit. And then we can wire the hot, neutral, and ground cables into the power supply in their respective positions. Next we have our power cable which will carry the 12 volt current from the power supply into our control board. Um, here I'm using an all black cable, but chances are yours will be a red and black nice thick cable to carry plenty of power from our control from our power supply to our control board. Uh, connect the red wire to the positive terminal and the black wire to the negative terminal. Also make sure uh, you just saw the switch on the side. Make sure that you are switched to either the 220 volts if you are in most of the world or the 120, 110 volt setting if you are in the United States. Would not want any power supplies uh, getting destroyed <laughs> before you really get printing. There are a few holes on the sides of the power supply cover uh, which can be secured in place with some M3 screws. The alignment isn't quite right on this power supply cover, I believe it was one of our prototype ones when we actually ended up filming this, <laughs> but your holes should align very nicely uh, to keep everything secure. Next we have our power supply mounts. Uh, these go first um, or second, the order is really up to you, um, attached to the bottom of the power supply, and then we will use 8mm long M5 screws. Uh, and T-slot nuts. Uh, this should be an old story at this point to actually attach it to the frame. Here again we're using some of the drop-in variety, uh, but you're welcome to use the sliding variety as well. And it's going to be a little difficult to see um, up under the printer while we're doing this, uh, which is one of the reasons why it might be easier to attach the uh, 3D printed power supply mounts before attaching them to the power supply, but that's not how we did it when we filmed this. Um, learn from our, our mistakes and uh, feel free to, to take some liberties in the exact order in which things are assembled.
Ah, if you haven't already, uh, here is how you will attach the, uh, the heated bed. Uh, much like most heated beds on 3D printers, we have long M3 screws, we have some nice stiff springs, and then we have some small knobs on the bottom to help us adjust the actual heights of the bed. Uh, one thing that's important to keep in mind is that leveling the bed is usually pretty easy. Uh, the most important aspect is that the plastic hits the conveyor belt level uh, on the rear of the heated bed. Uh, from there you have a lot more, I guess, freedom uh, as far as the accuracy of the level of the front of the bed. Uh, once the plastic has stuck to the conveyor belt, it'll be more than happy to uh, travel along the conveyor belt in our experience. And before attaching your conveyor belt, don't forget to fully tighten all of the screws on your heated bed. That way, once we pull the conveyor belt tightly, like we showed earlier in the video, you can then use the leveling screws to loosen the bed and bring it up to the point where the conveyor belt is comfortable. Hopefully by now you have a pretty good idea on how the bed is leveled, but just to be really clear, uh, the first thing we're going to do is loosen all of the bed springs in the order shown on the screen and then we will adjust the height of the Y end stop. Um, this will take a few tries to get it perfectly right, uh, but essentially what we want is for when the X axis uh, levels against the Y end stop, the nozzle will be uh, kind of perfectly uh, touching the top of the conveyor belt. Uh, one other point to notice is that it's uh, important to do this while the bed is heated, uh, probably to 50 degrees Celsius or so uh, when you're doing this so you can get it as precise as possible. By default, your Powerbelt 3D Zero should be pretty precise out of the box, but if you want to make it more precise, you can follow any online guide on how to calibrate a 3D printer. However, because we're working with a tilted XY axis and a conveyor belt, it gets to be a little bit trickier. So we use uh, mostly uh, these four models that you can see on the screen here. The first step is to isolate the X axis from the Y axis uh, from the angle and just calibrate that. So we do that with the flat model shown. The second step that we typically go through is calibrating the X and Y axes, and by creating a calibration cube with equal to the 35 degree axis that we are printing at, uh, we are able to isolate the X and Y axes from the conveyor belt Z axis, so we can calibrate those. After that, we will run through a series of test models to check to see how accurate we are, mostly using a calibration cube and a half calibration cube with a cylinder on it so that we can analyze the roundness that we're able to print at. With that, I wanted to thank you so much for uh, coming along this journey with us. Um, again, we recognize that this isn't as detailed as we would like it to be. So if you need any help whatsoever, please, please use the resources in the description uh, or feel free to reach out to us if you are having trouble getting your first 3D printer together. Uh, again, my name is Adam from Powerbelt 3D. Thank you so much for watching and happy printing.